Hello, my name is Cyclones Oz, and today we are tracking the Corel Sea system once again, surprise, surprise, but it is a significant threat to the Queensland coastline. I'm going to be giving you a very detailed forecast regarding where this storm is going to be impacting, what conditions you're expecting, and I'm also going to be taking a look at the rainfall forecast for the landfall locations around Mackay as well, and then down towards southeastern Queensland. So make sure you watch to the end and subscribe if you enjoyed this video as well. I apologize if it's a little bit jumpy, so make sure you watch to the end. Subscribe as well if you haven't already, and please do leave a like on the video while you're at it and tell me how to improve in the comment section down below and also click the join button down below and get access to an exclusive perk such as being named at the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching and let's take a look at this tropical cyclone. So you can see the system right now, it's looking average to be fair actually. It's not a named tropical system right now, a tropical cyclone. Uh, we were expecting it to be named Cyclone Kiralee at this point, but the Bureau of Meteorology hasn't pulled the trigger on this system yet. And I'm not surprised that they haven't either because it is a fairly messy looking tropical law at this point, um, which is a little bit disappointing because generally when this system, well, what I was expecting is when this system got named is when I'd be able to give a far more detailed forecast regarding the storm's intensification phase and what we're expecting uh, to happen towards Queensland as the system gets towards landfall. However, I can still do that um, in the sense of we are expecting a cyclone to come ashore as a severe tropical cyclone still, um, but there are a few more variables that I will need to cover in this update, so make sure you stick around to the end. Uh, looking at the wind forecast, first of all, you can see that the system, oh, that's when we're expecting landfall from the ECM LBO forecast model, which has been the weaker of the models actually, and I will get to why later on. But you can see as we take a look at the Access G3 model, it's still spinning this system up uh, today, and by this evening, I'd be very surprised if this wasn't a tropical cyclone. And if it wasn't, we've got a very good situation evolving for Queensland in the sense that this system will be taking way longer than expected and it will actually lose a day of intensification over some of the best conditions for tropical cyclones, not just in Australia, but also in the world. So that's a bit of very good news for Queensland. And the later this thing develops, the better it is going to be for Townsville, Air and Bowen. Uh, but yeah, by around Tuesday morning, it's going to be on that rapid intensification run, strengthening quite fast throughout Tuesday and then into Wednesday, expecting it to be a severe tropical cyclone by Wednesday morning. And you can already see Wednesday is when you're going to want to have your condition, uh, uh, preparations uh, completed uh, if you live between Bowen and Mackay, including Hamilton Island and Proserpine. Make sure you're preparing for a cyclone in that zone. But by Wednesday morning, they need to be done because you're going to be seeing cyclone conditions extend across the coastline, first on Hamilton Island at around 2 p.m. and then inland towards Proserpine and Bowen by around 8 or 9 p.m. at night. So it's going to be a very windy night, that's for sure. So some very powerful wind gusts are expected, especially on the outer reefs around Marion Reef or Lehu Reef. We're expecting wind gusts approaching 220 kilometers an hour from this severe tropical cyclone as it moves through. Um, and then, yeah, by Wednesday night, it's going to be really approaching the coastline. This is going to be a very menacing picture indeed by Wednesday night, moving very close to the coastline at this point, still intensifying as well. And it looks like we're going to get a direct landfall again on Bowling or Cape Bowling Green, just north of air, just outside of air, which has been the landfall site for the past four days, um, mind you, making the landfall exactly where we've been calling for that landfall uh, for around four days. Uh, now, as a very powerful, what looks to be at least high-end Category 3, in fact, winds might actually be approaching Category 4 status at this point, but getting very close to, I think, peak wind gusts we're expecting in excess of 100 knots, uh, which is about, uh, what, 185, 190 kilometres an hour in this sense. So very strong wind gusts are expected to be coming ashore, and by uh, Thursday morning, you're looking at at least 160 uh, or 170 kilometre an hour winds blowing through the air town site, and also into Townsville as well. And this condition only deteriorate with the storm making its final landfall on Queensland by around Thursday 2 p.m. at this point, which I believe Thursday mid-afternoon is going to be the expected landfall time, anywhere from 10 to about 4 p.m. Um, that's where we're expecting landfall to occur on Thursday. And again, I'll be able to hone that really um, in by around Wednesday or so. That's where we're going to be knowing exactly how strong this system is going to be as it moves ashore. But right now, expect a Category 3 or 4 strength severe tropical cyclone. It's still on the forecast and conditions are just pretty much perfect for this system over the next 36 hours, which means it's going to be able to put on a lot of knots very, very quickly um, for its intensification phase. Then it moves inland to communities such as Charters Town, still delivering them pretty nice nasty cyclone conditions. In fact, it looks like it still might be a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone as it blows right over Charters Towers, and it looks like cyclone conditions ease out of Townsville and Air by around Friday morning as this system moves further inland and will definitely be drenching those inland communities around Huendon down towards Matabara, uh, long reaching in towards Emerald as well. 
uh, but I reckon Emerald will get the cyclone impact by around Saturday morning. It still actually remains a cyclone, interestingly enough, down towards Saturday. It could still be a Category 1 strength system over land, which is a very long time over land for an Australian region tropical cyclone for Queensland. I think Debbie only lasted like 12 hours um, over land before it was downgraded to a tropical low. So that's interesting. And from this forecast, that suggests that this is going to be a very strong cyclone making landfall. The stronger it is, the la longer it can last over land without access to the ocean for fuel. And it's going to be dumping a lot of rainfall as well. The stronger this system is, the more inflow bands it's going to, or the stronger the inflow bands are going to be, and the more rainfall is going to be dropped south of Proserpine down towards Mackay in these hills, which I will get to a little bit later on in the video. But yeah, I'm really going to hammer home those wind forecasts once again. If you live between Ingham and Bowen, prepare for severe tropical cyclone conditions. Uh, anywhere in these purple uh, wind field, that is severe tropical cyclone wind gusts up to around 200 kilometers an hour. Very destructive wind gusts. They will blow things apart. Um, if your property is rated category three uh, cyclone conditions, your home should be fine. However, it's gonna be things like flying debris that really cause the damage in a situation like this. So loose branches, make sure you're cutting them down. If you've got a loose tree branch from a ghost gum or uh, something like that, make sure you're removing it and disposing of it um, appropriately. If you've got lawn chairs or deck chairs or something like that, any outdoor furniture that can blow around in wind gusts of up to 225 kilometers an hour, make sure you're putting those inside or in a safe space, strapping them down just making sure that nothing can fly around and become airborne in a situation like this because that's generally where the worst property damage comes from. It's not from uh, cyclones completely shredding homes to smithereens. That's reserved for the worst, the worst cyclones. Um, but it is generally from flying debris in a situation like this. Um, also, if you've got boats or yachts um, around the Townsville or Air Harbours, I don't think Air actually has a boat harbour, but if you've got um, your private boats or something in Townsville, if you can get them onto land onto a dry dock, that's advised. But if you can't, I would recommend sailing them up the coast to around, um, I'd say Innisfail's a pretty safe bet. Cairns is a very safe bet at this point. Um, but yeah, your insurance should cover damage if you do have um, cyclone insurance or cyclone damage insurance. I'm not 100% sure on how all of that works. So I'm not the best person to come to for advice. But if you are concerned regarding that, then make sure you're checking with your insurance company as well. And also with your local Shire office and the Bureau of Meteorology. They're going to have all of the official information regarding this system as it comes ashore. But a very, very powerful storm is expected here. Um, and a very, very dangerous system is expected. Um, storm surge as well is one thing that I have been hammering home, but I don't think I've been hammering it home enough. It's still expected to be very high um, in this tropical cyclone, probably about three or four meters above the highest astronomical tide. And I did read a comment saying high tide on Thursday is gonna be at midday. Um, and that's actually when we're expecting the landfall to occur. Midday or 1 p.m. is kind of the um, zone of time that I'm expecting the landfall to occur. More loosely, it will be between about 10 to 4 p.m., um, but definitely around midday. So a uh, landfall combined with the highest tide, um, that's going to cause some pretty significant storm surge, I reckon. And you could be seeing totals up to two or three meters. And for this uh, region, especially around air, which is a river delta, a very, very flat piece of land, uh, that's some very significant flooding that you can be expecting. So if you do live in an area that's prone to flooding on the highest astronomical tide, or if you got flooded from Cyclone Debbie, then make sure you are preparing for flooding in this situation by getting your sandbags ready. And by now, Monday, I definitely reckon it's time to swing into full gear, preparing for this tropical cyclone, getting your sandbags ready, making sure your cyclone emergency kit is ready. Make sure you've got enough bottled water, four liters a day for probably about, um, or I'd say five or days to a week, depending on where you live, per person in your household. So um, if you've got five people in your household, what's that? That's about 150 liters of water that you're going to need for a week supply. So make sure you've got that in uh, uh, store as well. If you've got a working generator, then that's great. Make sure you've got enough fuel to power it. Make sure you've got beers as well. Don't get too pissed though. It is a tropical cyclone, remember. Um, but yeah, make sure you've got your cyclone supplies ready in a situation like this, because especially if you live in a remote area as well, um, and even in air, which is at risk of being completely cut off from storm surge flooding and rainfall flooding, um, and even down towards Bowen and in some of the hills down around Proserpine and Mackay, um, make sure that you are prepared to be cut off for a couple of days at least, because this cyclone will be dumping quite a lot of rainfall in those areas, and there is a significant risk of you being completely cut off from the outside world for a couple of days. And I would not be surprised if you completely lose mobile risk reception as well in a situation like this. Um, it could blow out uh, mobile cell towers, it could also blow out uh, the electricity grid in certain locations. So also be prepared for a situation like that. I would make sure that you're purchasing non-perishable foods. 
uh, tin foods, canned foods. Make sure you've got enough preserved fruit as well. If you've got a, a fruit dryer as well, or an, uh, what are they called, a dehydrator or something, dry a bit of fruit as well. That's a great snack to have in a tropical cyclone situation like that. It's all the little things that can really count um, in a situation like this. And it's not just about surviving a tropical cyclone. It's also making sure that you've got a livable place for a week's time because in some locations you will be completely cut off from the outside world for at least a couple of days. So it's the little luxuries like dehydrated fruit that can really get you through a situation like this. Um, not only is it nutritious, but in my opinion, it's absolutely delicious as well. Uh, but yeah, that's too much waffle on dehydrated fruit at this point. Um, but yeah, as the cyclone moves inland, it will weaken off as you'd expect, and then it's going to move down towards southeastern Queensland. And as we get on with this video a little bit, because it's really starting to drag on at this point, um, it moves down towards Rockhampton, past Rockhampton. Still as a tropical cyclone by the looks of things. Um, south of Bundaberg as well, in fact, right over the top of Bundaberg. And it looks like it gets to within like 10 kilometers of the coastline and then moves inland. Um, on the Sunshine Coast, and this is when we're going to see this rainfall situation become really significant by around next Sunday and Monday. Early next week, a lot of rainfall expected on the Sunshine Coast. There will be places picking up up to six or 700 millimetres. In fact, what's that? Just outside of Harvey Bay, up to 900 millimetres or 1,000 millimetres in one or two locations. So very, very heavy rainfall expected. Now, this forecast has been very, very much chopping and changing over the past couple of days, which is uh, kind of annoying in the sense that I can't give the detailed forecast yet. However, by around next Friday, um, or this Friday, so Australia Day, I'm gonna have a very good idea on what's gonna happen um, regarding the rainfall situation in southeastern Queensland, whether it's gonna be a Gold Coast situation or a Sun Co uh, Sunshine Coast situation. Uh, there's still a lot of variables out there in the forecast, so I won't be commenting on that right now, but just know, expect a lot of rainfall down there um, in around a week's time from the passage of the remnants of Tropical Cyclone Kiralee, because it will be Cyclone Kiralee at this point uh, from what we expect. But the inflow bands is what's really caught my eye. A lot of rainfall expected outside of Bowen, Proserpine, Halliday Bay, uh, inland towards Yalbaru, and these mountains along the coastal um, parts, the, the mountains that kind of parallel the coastline here. I'm not sure what they're called. Um, I'll have to check that up, actually. I really need to learn my geography in this region. So if you could help me out in the comments, that would be much appreciated. But a lot of rainfall expected from the inflow bands, which, um, for those of you who don't know, are very concentrated, heavy rainfall bands that fly in around the tropical cyclone onto the coastline. They have damaging wind gusts, not cyclone wind gusts, but they still pack some uh, very meaty wind gusts in them, and they can cause some property damage as well. But they generally, the worst of them is just very heavy rainfall, very concentrated rainfall totals. And this is where you can pick up some of the most extreme rainfall totals that Australia sees. You're talking up to 100 millimetres in an hour. Um, the inflow bands was actually what caused the extreme flooding in Cyclone Jasper. Uh, the centre of circulation from Jasper was located decently far inland over the Cape York Peninsula, but it was all that inflow bands flowing into the tropical cyclone that caused that very significant rainfall totals around Karumba, where you were talking around 2,200 millimetres in some locations. So very significant rainfall totals can be expected here. And as I said, up to 800, 900 millimetres in one or two locations. And this will all fall in around three days time as well. So very, very heavy rainfall is expected. And also some very heavy rainfall expected around the storm's landfall site. Um, as with all tropical cyclones, the destructive core is gonna have that really concentrated, very heavy rainfall totals. We are talking up to uh, 400 millimeters in three to six hours time. So very, very heavy rainfall. Um, and it will be causing some significant flooding, some very significant flash flooding in certain locations. But I believe in a severe tropical cyclone, that's probably gonna be the least of your worries. Initially, you're gonna be looking out for this just destructive winds and also storm surge, but very heavy rainfall combined with the highest astronomical tide, uh, or well, three meters above the highest astronomical tide actually, storm surge, that's when you're gonna be seeing the absolute worst ca um, case scenario really develop. And this is a situation where we could be seeing something very close to the worst case scenario unfold. Um, this storm can be very, very uh, closely compared to Cyclone Debbie. Um, I've said it time and time again, but yeah, the Cyclone Debbie is going to be your analog for this system. If you were flooded from the uh, storm surge or from rainfall in Cyclone Debbie, you're probably going to be flooded in this situation. If you sustained significant property damage from the winds from Cyclone Debbie, you're going to sustain significant property damage from the winds from Cyclone Kiralee. They were very similar tropical cyclones in how they formed, in how they tracked, and in how they uh, hit the Queensland coastline. They're going to both hit the Queensland coastline 
Valentine as a relatively weaker, it'll probably be a weakening tropical system, but still is a very powerful category three or category four strength tropical cyclone. In fact, Kiralee might even be five or 10 knots stronger. Generally speaking, five or 10 knots doesn't make the world of difference in terms of uh, damages, but it still could mean um, an extra a couple of trees down around the place. And an extra couple of trees down around the place means more wind damage possibly, or more flying debris flying through the air. So make sure you are uh, being very, very safe in a situation like this. And I will just flick straight back to the wind forecast from about, I believe it's uh, Wednesday evening. This is when conditions start to get really nasty uh, for the Queensland coastline on Wednesday evening, very early Thursday morning. Um, and yeah, basically Thursday is going to be a write-off. Make sure you're staying indoors um, on Thursday. If it suddenly goes calm around Thursday midday, make sure you remain inside. Uh, you're probably just being impacted by the cyclone's eye, and if, especially if you're new to the tropics as well, if you've just moved to Townsville Air, um, these cyclones can catch you off guard. So if you live, uh, if it suddenly does go calm, then I, I highly advise um, against going outside. Make sure you've got that radio so you can get the latest information from the ABC or from the Bureau of Meteorology regarding when it's safe to actually go outside. Um, but in a situation like this, going outside and being surrounded by clouds is probably the worst thing that you can do because these winds can come in very violent in around 10 minutes time. Um, from the eye of the tropical cyclone. And also if the cyclone wobbles as well and jumps around, uh, you might only just get into the eye for a couple of minutes and it might go dead calm. And if you feel like that's the time to go outside and then 30 seconds later, it comes around the backside of the cyclone hits you, uh, that's when the flying debris can really get you. And there's been instances where people have been severely injured or even killed uh, by going outside in the tropical cyclone's eye. So it's probably the most dangerous part of a tropical cyclone uh, for people that haven't experienced cyclones before is going outside um, in the sudden calm of the storm. Uh, so make sure you've got that radio so you can stay up to date with the Bureau of Meteorology and the ABC on when it is safe to return outside. Um, peak wind gusts from this cyclone, probably around that 180 to 190 kilometer an hour threshold. But again, they could be a little bit stronger than that if the cyclone um, develops faster over the next 12 hours, it might have the opportunity to put on an extra 10 knots of wind speed, an extra 20 kilometer an hour of wind speed. Around Townsville, you're looking at about 150 kilometer an hour peak wind gusts. Air is a little bit more extreme where you're probably looking at closer to 180 kilometer an hour peak wind gusts. But considering the area around air is very flat, they're gonna be very exposed to these significant wind gusts as this cyclone makes landfall, um, which means that I reckon that this might even be a little bit of a low ball. Air might actually receive wind gusts up to 200 kilometers an hour, but I definitely reckon air and locations between Townsville and air are going to sustain the most significant damage from the passage of this tropical cyclone. And even inland towards areas such as Charters Towers, they could also sustain some pretty significant damage from this tropical cyclone. Um, I actually didn't know how close Charters Towers was to the coastline, so I'm fairly sure that they would have some pretty rigid building codes in up there. Um, but if they don't, then they're at some very serious risk of being blasted by wind gusts up to 150 kilometers an hour. In short, don't panic too much right now. Um, there's still quite a few variables in the forecast, especially over the next 12 hours. There is still that small chance that this storm completely busts and we only get a category two strength tropical cyclone impact. There are models actually suggesting that at this point, but I would not be banking on that whatsoever at this point. Um, but still, a very dangerous cyclone impact is expected at this time. That's basically um, not guaranteed, but it's very, very likely. So watch the forecast very closely. Make sure you're staying up to date with this channel. There's no better way than doing that by subscribing. And also leave a like on the video as well. I thank you so much for your support recently. It's been heartwarming. It's been great. Click the join button if you want to monetarily support me. It supports this software and it also supports, um, say, a new microphone potentially. I really want to get a new microphone because I've had comments uh, where I've been speaking through a toilet roll apparently. So that's a little bit interesting. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching the video to this point. It's been great having your company and I'll catch you all in the next store. Goodbye.